we have a solar storm near miss and a mini radiation storm, all because big flare players are back in Earth view. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is switching gears a little bit. We do still have the potential for solar storms, but now we're taking a look at big flare players that have entered center stage. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, you can see back on the 8th, pow, right there, that was a big M-class flare from region 3053. It also launched a solar storm. And then just a few l moments later, pow, right there, that was region 3047 firing off yet another near M-class flare. And this region, actually launched a radiation storm that we're still kind of dealing with the effects from right now, but things are beginning to calm down and it looks like the risk for more radiation storms is at least relaxing, maybe for the next two or three days at least. But meanwhile, when we take a look at that solar storm that region 3053 launched, it is moving to the east of us. It doesn't look like it's going to hit Earth. It's gonna be kind of a side swipe. So we doubt we're gonna see all that much, but we could get more. The reason why is because we've got multiple big flare players, and that means we could get solar storm launches. Region, both region 3053 and 3055 are X flare players. NOAA's giving us about a 10% chance right now of X flares, and this could last easily over this next week. Now, as we switch to our far-sighted sun, this is stereo A, and it's looking at the sun just a little bit from the side. You can see both in the north and in the south, we've got lots of activity. There's been a lot more uh, active regions that have been emerging. In fact, when you take a look back on the 8th or 9th, we've got a new uh, region down in the south. This is going to be region 3056, and you can see it launch this massive solar storm on the 8th, and that region means that we could be definitely seeing big flares from it, as well as potential for more solar storms that could be Earth-directed. Also in the north, we do have more activity, so this does mean that these big flare players and solar flux is going to continue to be boosted easily over this next week, and likely the chance for big flares is going to remain a possibility. Now, taking a closer look at that solar flare and radiation storm activity, we turn to our DRAP model that gives us a good idea of how our ionosphere is being impacted. And you can see those solar flares coming up as like these rainbow circles on Earth's day side. And these solar flares haven't been all that intense until the 8th when pow, right there over the Pacific, we can see that M near M26 or 2.6 flare. This actually even impacted radio propagation. You can see in our radio propagation map clear up to 28 to 30 megahertz have been impacted for a short while before things kind of settled down. And then things were okay until the 9th when wham, right there, we get that near M-class flare and you can see that radiation storm at the high latitudes beginning to ramp up. Luckily, as we turn to our radio propagation map, we're not seeing any monster impacts. And this is likely because this radiation storm is only at elevated levels. We're below the S1 threat level threshold. So we're not in a full radiation storm and that's going to allow radio propagation to continue, especially since we're seeing that solar flux rise. We're back well into the triple digits, sitting around 150 or so, and that gives uh, radio propagation a chance to kind of ride out some of these smaller flares. Luckily, we still haven't seen any big class, uh, M class flares or even X class flares, but it, it is definitely on the menu. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders expect to see a bit more noise on the bands, at least until that radio propagation or that that radiation storm dies down. And then over the next few days, possibly even the week, you're gonna be dealing with potential radio blackouts. Switching to our moon, we are passing through the second quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with a full moon being on the 13th. So you night sky watchers, if you wanna catch those dim objects in the sky, you're gonna have this bright companion once again. So you're gonna to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have that solar storm that's going east of Earth. It could give us a little bit of a glancing blow around the 11th or 12th, but believe it or not, that is not what is driving this forecast. In actuality, NOAA is playing it a bit safe because we did have that coronal hole that launched that solar storm, that stealthy solar storm, and then began to close up. Well, that coronal hole is pretty much closed. However, NOAA is still forecasting us just in case 
that with that coronal hole being open, that we're going to get some fast solar wind and it will maximize in and around the 13th. And it's likely an overblown forecast, but NOAA is expecting major storm conditions up to about 70% chance of a major storm at high latitudes. And at mid latitudes, we're expecting unsettled conditions, possibly active conditions, and NOAA is giving us about a 30% chance of a minor storm. Again, this is with that coronal hole still being open before it kind of closed down once it launched that solar storm and actually had a couple new active regions kind of emerge almost in the middle of it. So expect that this is a bit uh, surprising and maybe a little bit strong. Things should likely be a bit more settled down than that, but I'm just going to keep that in the forecast just in case because this is kind of a unique case in, in of itself. But Aurora photographers, you know, if you're at high latitudes, it might be worth a go. Mid latitude, well, I seriously doubt it, but you know, you never know. So I thought I'd just put it in there and just stay vigilant because if Aurora comes, you always have to be on your toes. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have quite a few active regions on the Earth-facing disk, including some big flare players, mainly regions 3053, 3055, and now region 3056 has joined the fray. We do have uh, big flares that are occurring and radio blackouts are definitely on the menu. NOAA is giving us up to about a 50% chance of M-class flares with up to even a 10% chance of X-class flares over the next few days. And this will likely continue in through the week. So you GPS users, especially on Earth's day side and near dawn and dusk, Stay vigilant because radio blackouts could give you some real issues when it comes to GPS reception. The nice thing is that solar flux is well into the triple digits. We're now hovering anywhere between 140 and 160, which means excellent radio propagation on Earth's day side, except of course for those radio blackouts. And we also have a radiation storm. So at high latitudes, radio propagation is suffering a little bit. It's not high enough to be the S1 level, but we are in the D2 minor range. So you frequent flyers, and this does include air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, just know that you do have a little bit of eleva elevated solar flux or radio uh, <laughs> radiation right now. So <laughs> Please take this into consideration in your flight plans, and it should be calming down over the next couple days, and by midweek, things should be back into the D1 normal range. So the space weather is switching gears a little bit this week. We do have a solar storm that's moving off to the east of Earth that could give us a potential glancing blow. And we do have some potential fast wind from a coronal hole that began to close just as it was launching some of that fast wind toward Earth. So Aurora photographers, well, if you're at high latitudes, you might get a chance for a show. But if you're at mid latitudes, it's going to be pretty dicey. So only if you're dedicated should you chase. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, we have a lot of big flare players on the Earth-facing disk this week, and that means radio blackouts are definitely on the menu. The nice thing is that we also have solar flux jumping up uh, well into the triple digits, and that gives you a little bit of robust, you know, ability to not get knocked out by those radio blackouts, but that's kind of a problem when we also have a radiation storm uh, that's waning, and that's going to give us some trouble over the next couple days. So if you're a radio amateur, yeah, we've got good propagation, but it's going to be a bit noisy. So just hang in there and things should improve over the next couple days. And now you GPS users, well, things aren't so great for you right now. We do have that solar flux that's boosted, and that doesn't help you if you're getting GPS reception at low latitudes, especially anywhere near dawn or near dusk. And then we have that radiation storm that's hitting both the north and the south polar regions, and that doesn't help uh, GPS reception when you're anywhere near the poles. So just deal with it for a little bit. Things should get a little bit better. And of course, we've got the radio blackouts, which cause issues for you on Earth's day side. So if you're GPS user, please stay vigilant and know things will get better over the next few days. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.